Hello and welcome to Deanna's Writing Desk, where we discuss everything to do with writing, independent publishing, books, creativity, as well as general observations of life. All the world is a stage. Information about this podcast and a list of upcoming episodes, as well as all of my books, can be found on my website, deannahardy.com. And we are on episode three of Deanna's Writing Desk podcast. Welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about writing short fiction. This may be an episode that you will take to if you love writing. If you are a writer, want to be a writer, you write a lot, no matter your age, you may find this more interesting than if you are a reader. But by all means, do let me know what kind of shorter fiction you like to read, because there are so many different versions out there nowadays with e-readers and the way that subscriptions to e-readers can work means that readers can buy into the shorter story, the novellas or the novelettes. Some authors are writing short fiction like serials in serial format and bringing it out every two weeks or every month. So writing has changed in this respect. When I was first writing, I was really into the idea of writing novellas. I loved the idea of shorter fiction. Shorter fiction was something that was much more popular in the 1940s, 1950s. The Sherlock Holmes books were all short fiction. They were novellas or short novels, that kind of length. I think they were all under 50,000 words. Some of them were under 40,000 words. So it was a popular format. And then I think with the publishing industry and the cost of different books. The industry started to favour the longer novels. It was more cost effective to put together a larger book than to bring out lots of little shorter ones as years went on. So short fiction sort of went out of fashion and people didn't buy them because they couldn't buy them. With ebooks, with digital books, that's all come back into fashion now because it is easy and also rewarding to write something that isn't overly long, that you can get out there in a short space of time, that you can read on a train ride or a bus journey without worrying that you're going to have to bookmark it for later or thinking, well, I'm never going to finish this because I'm only ever going to read it in bits and pieces. Whereas if an ebook is only an hour long, you know that you might finish it in that train journey while you're commuting to work, for example. So it's become much more popular to write novellas now. And there's a beautiful skill to writing these books, which I absolutely love. And that's really what I want to talk about today is all the different things you can do with shorter fiction. Now, I'm going to relate this episode to how I term the different word counts and the names that I give to that type of fiction. Okay, so for the purposes of this episode, I consider flash fiction to be anything up to a thousand words. And I consider short stories to be anything up to 10,000 words. 20,000 words is where I place novelettes. And then novellas are anything up to 40,000 words. Up to 60,000 words, I would consider that to be a short novel. And then anything beyond 60,000 is a novel, as far as I'm concerned, a full length novel. Now, let's just start with flash fiction. I would encourage you to write flash fiction for inspiration. I would encourage you just to get a few hundred words out there and try and create a story out of it. When you're writing very, very short form stories, you're not really worried about plot. You're not really worried about characterization so much. What you're going for is theme and style. You're going for an atmosphere. You want to convey an atmosphere to the reader and stir the imagination. You might even be able to get a little twist in there. You may be able to get a little bit of characterization in there, especially if the characterization of the protagonist is part of the atmosphere. You may even be able to get a tiny, tiny little bit of plot in there. You can do all these things. You can play around with it. When you've got up to 1,000 words, 
You don't need to feel any kind of pressure or commitment. You can just play around with the words and see what comes and know that that can be a complete story in itself. It is a skill. It's a skill in writing, especially if you want to create good flash fiction that is getting a certain point across. And like I said, usually this point will be to do with style or theme. It will bend towards the literary side of fiction a little bit more but that's not to say you can't put genre in there that's not to say that you can't write 1000 words of a romance and have it be really good or have it be really exciting and so on you can absolutely but flash fiction and the shorter form fiction for the most part tends to lean towards literary fiction. There are exceptions to that rule. Usually when you are writing shorter fiction, do be part of a larger story. Like if you're writing bonus stories or if you're writing prequels, then that's different because you've already set out the story in the longer book that you've already written. So flash fiction, I think, is fantastic for expanding yourself. If you find yourself with writer's block, if you find yourself stuck with writing in general, sitting down and finding the time, finding the inspiration, I would encourage you just to belt out 500 words or less. That's all it has to be. Just get something out on paper and you don't need to make it part of your current work in project. You can literally make it its own thing. And by doing that, you're not putting any pressure on yourself. You're just writing something for the pleasure of it. I have quite a lot of flash fiction in my computer files that I wrote a long time ago, which I'm really enjoying getting out there to my Substack readers, my newsletter subscribers. I'm really enjoying that because it's taking me back to when I used to start writing and the inspiration that I had and the passion that I had. And I'm really looking forward to writing more flash fiction as well once I get through the backlog I really want to write more because it's such a good way to stir the imagination and just to get yourself kind of back into the flow of writing as well and of course with flash fiction you get that sense of accomplishment you get to reach those magic two words the end much more quickly (laughs) than you would if you were writing a whole novel. So you do get that kind of euphoric hit of completing something very often and very quickly, which I think is a beautiful feeling. And that kind of euphoric hit, that dopamine hit, if you like, it's quite important to access that, especially if you're in a place where you're feeling a little bit down about writing, where you're feeling like, you know, you can't get to the end or whatever it might be. Just write some flash fiction down that is really what I recommend you know put it up on your website show it to your readers it doesn't have to be this big important thing it can be a fun thing and it can be something that gets people tuning in daily to your Facebook page or to your website or to your newsletter whatever it might be so play around with flash fiction definitely I think it's a beautiful tool for so many reasons Moving on to, I'm going to move on to novellas, actually. Novellas is something I consider to be anything up to 40,000 words. I love novellas. I absolutely love novellas. Um, The Witching Pen, the first book in the Witching Pen series was a novella, as was the second book. Releasing the Wolf was a novella. I love writing novellas to kick off a series. (laughs) And I will admit, certainly with The Witching Pen, I kind of didn't know that's what I was going to be doing. I thought I was going to be writing just like three novellas and that would be it. But it turned out that I was actually writing a series. And as time went on and I started to write The Eye of the Storm as well, I just started to realise that, you know, that, that first book in the series that really just gets people into it, making that a novella allows it to be quick, allows you to set the scene in a fast pace, allows you to put a lot of adventure in there, allows you to get the characters out there straight away for people to meet. Because of course, you're thinking about how to do all these things. If you're putting it into a much shorter format, you're thinking much more concisely about how you write a whole novel, as it were, how you write a whole story, beginning, middle and end. Because a novella does have a beginning, a middle and an end okay it is like a novel in format literally but what you're doing is you're condensing it you're shrinking it down 
So you have to think about your writing style much more carefully and how you want to tell a whole story, even if there's a bit of a cliffhanger ending and even if it goes into book two, it still has to round off into some kind of completion. So the novella, the skill in that is thinking about how you write and getting it into much fewer words than you would if it was a full-length novel and I really enjoy that challenge I have to say I think I have a naturally fast-paced style of writing anyway I think that my style of writing suits the novella format and what I usually find myself doing in editing phase is filling my books out. I'm not somebody who culls words when it gets to editing. I'll reach the editing phase and I'm finding myself scrambling to add words. So with a novella I would say yes you do need to put more thought into it. You need to put as much thought into it as if you're writing a full-length novel but you need to think about you know kind of bringing it out in a certain way that means readers get everything that they need to get in such a short space of time and again without making it too rushed it's got to all be quite equally paced yes it will be fast paced I think unless you're writing something literary again but if you're writing genre fiction I think it's got to be fast paced to a certain extent but that's okay you know a lot of people like fast paced and you know we're, we're of a tv culture where we're watching episodes you know like a next Netflix or HBO and so on and those are very fast paced we're kind of used to actually having that kind of very quick information and fast pace coming at us and the novella really suits that and I think that's one of the reasons why serial fiction has really taken off because people are used to that format now so if you find yourself skilled at writing novellas or short novels I think short novels is very similar to novellas I'm not going to differentiate them for this episode because I think you know 30,000, 60,000 words, you're still doing the same thing. You're, you're still taking a complete story with a beginning, a middle, an end, and everything in between there needs to be for the characters to do. And you're condensing it down as skillfully as you can into that shorter format. So if you find yourself with that skill, then I would say absolutely use it. Absolutely use it to your advantage. If you're somebody who is quite committed and dedicated and, you know, you have the discipline to put out something weekly or something monthly um you know you'll know this about yourself if you're someone who's like a blogger and you've never failed to get that blog post out on time <laughs> if you're somebody like that then look into writing a serial look into that serial format i think um kindle has yeah I, i'm not on it but i think that kindle has the um is it kindle vela I think um, for authors, uh, serial writing authors, where they literally put out something periodically, it might be every week, it might be every two weeks, or it might be every month, I'm not sure, but look into it. But there are other um, subscription apps as well, e-readers that allow readers to subscribe, and then they bring authors in and authors will literally put out their work very regularly like episodic work and it works really really well for a lot of authors and I will say you know I'm personally not a fan of Kindle Unlimited from an author's point of view because of the exclusivity clause in the contract um, I'm not a fan of that at all but if you are someone who is willing to use Kindle Unlimited, that also lends itself to serial work because readers subscribe to it. If readers subscribe to it, then they're essentially already paying, you know, they've already paid for your work, essentially. So if you can get yourself a good fan base, they will be reading that work that you put out regularly all the time because they'll know when to expect it. And now I'm going to go on to novelettes. <laughs> I I actually love writing novelettes and I didn't think I would. <laughs> I've just finished a novelette. I've just finished the third novelette of um, a, a series of four novelettes that I'm writing in a very kind of mini series called After the Storm. And you know, this this mini series, this set of four, is actually an offset series of stories that come off the back of a whole completed series called Eye of the Storm. Taking it literally from the title of the series, there has been a storm. 
a storm has taken place and that series where the storm took place has been completed it's been properly completed it's been rounded off there was a very good ending there but I've decided to create bonus stories that lead into a brand new series you know potentially I haven't written the brand new series yet but it's right there on the horizon for me to do so um, and novelettes I have found are absolutely a beautiful way to expand on deeper layers of a story where the characters and the background has already been established okay so the readers already know about these characters I'm writing they already know about their story they already know about the background and with these novelettes just say 20,000 words words what I'm doing with that is just going into deeper emotional layers that I I don't have the time to do in a full-length novel because actually you've got to get the plot in there you've got to get the plot into a full-length novel you've got to get readers onto the next scene you've got to have things moving at a fairly decent pace so that you can round off the arc of the story and you don't have time for the intricacies of the human condition not all of them you don't have time to go into the deeper mental and emotional layers that your characters are going through and really exploring those and with novelettes with these little side stories I'm finding that I can really do that so these are just up to 20,000 words and they're proving to be so rewarding for me they're really beautiful you know again it doesn't take too long to write especially if you're writing just a thousand words a day then you've got a whole novelette written in 20 days essentially if you're writing every day it's a really beautiful way again similar to flash fiction to get that inspiration going and to get yourself into writing or back into writing another example of a novelette that I've written which is not part of any series but a standalone is Till Death Do Us Part my little novelette that I wrote which is an adult retelling of The Little Mermaid this was beautiful to write I really enjoyed writing this this was a complete story in itself the reason it was possible for me to make it into a novelette was because the original story by Hans Christian Andersen was only about 10,000 words anyway okay it was not very long so I was basically building around that structure but adding my own style obviously and putting it a bit more in the modern world I decided to write it from first person present perspective so present tense first person point of view which is something I don't normally do I don't completely enjoy writing um, in that tense but it suited this particular story because it is about the Little Mermaid. So you're telling it, and I decided to tell it completely from her perspective. Um, because that's a, you know, when you tell something from someone's perspective, whether you're writing in third person subjective or whether you're writing in first person, you are really able to explore the intricacies of the emotions that that person is feeling who is projecting that story and that's something I really like to do so with The Little Mermaid I decided to add you know some of the scenes are set sort of you know in a slightly more surreal underwater atmosphere that spans mythologies and spans centuries so that was written in a slightly more, not a lot, but slightly more gothic kind of undertone um, in terms of the language that I used. And then other parts of that novelette were set in the modern world, in which case you're adding a slightly more upbeat, modern kind of speech. So I kind of played around with those two in the uh, just in within the length of I think that particular novelette was only about 11,000 words. I think it was maybe just under 11,000 words. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but it wasn't very long as I tried really hard to keep it to roughly the same length as the Hans Christian Andersen story because I wanted that connection. Because everyone already knows the story of The Little Mermaid, <laughs> because they already know that, it makes the novelette possible to write because I don't have to world build really, okay? I don't really have to set the scene a lot because people already know it in their minds. They know what to expect. So you can kind of go straight in to the Little Mermaid character herself and get her to tell her story. So that is another beautiful way to use novelettes if you wanted to write um, fairy tale retellings, for example, or the retelling 
of, you know, other vintage fiction that might be out there in the public domain and so on. It's a beautiful way to do that with a shorter fiction. I think that I'm going to leave it there because I've talked quite a lot about writing shorter fiction. There's a different skill set for each kind of subcategory of shorter fiction, if you like. And I would say play around with it, play around with it and go for it and explore different things, you know, explore just fun and inspiration with flash fiction, with style and theme, with novelettes. Again, you're working on style and theme in order to get that story out there. You're working on the characterization of the main protagonist and you know what they might be feeling the deeper layers that go on inside people's minds you can really explore that with a novelette you're working more on a concise way of writing with novellas and short novels you're looking at how to get everything you would find in a novel into a different style of writing that is more fast paced that is more concise it forces you to think about your characterization and it forces you to think about where you want to put your emphasis within your books when you're writing novellas and short fiction. So all of them, I think, are good for really just practicing writing as well and developing your skills. You know, I would say try a little bit of everything. I think that's really important. Um, you know, and again, I haven't talked about longer fiction. That's not part of this particular episode, but something like an epic fantasy novel which you know George R. R. Martin style <laughs> um, that you know that's a whole different skill set in some ways and if you're writing you know detective thrillers for example mysteries suspense then you know usually with that kind of genre you are exploring much longer fiction a hundred thousand words to two hundred thousand words where you're really playing around with the, with the plot and with the reader's minds in some way with fantasy books you're more so exploring the other world that you've set it in and setting out the politics of that world and the societies there's a lot of world building in high fiction so you know again that is a whole different skill set and not particularly what this episode is focused on but I think that writing all different kinds of fiction uh, the lengths of fiction is really important really rewarding and is really going to expand your skills as a writer so give that a go and I'd love to hear your comments get back to me let me know if you've written any short fiction if you've written flash fiction for example let me know if it's helped you if you've written any novelettes let me know how it's going if you're deciding you're wanting to write the first book in a series let me know if you decide to make it a novella or a short novel I'd love to hear back from you thank you so much for listening and I'm going to be back next week I think next week I am going to talk about writing sex scenes in fiction not in erotica that's not what I'm going to be talking about I'm going to be talking about writing sex scenes within um, a, a normal fiction novel and how to go about doing that so that you can make it kind of as good as it can be the episode is going to be suitable for everyone. I'm not going to use nasty words in it or anything like that. So it's fine for everybody to listen to. But obviously we're going to be discussing sex scenes. So, you know, there is that slightly more mature theme. But, you know, I'm not going to go into like massive detail or anything like that. Not on a podcast. So tune in if you're interested in doing that. Again, if you're a writer who's worried or nervous or anxious about getting that kind of writing in your book, tune in and hopefully I can help you a little bit with that. Okay, take care of yourselves and I will see you next week.